Hello, this is Steve Bacota. I run TI's Digital Power Group. With me here today is Chris Cooper from Avnet and Jamil Hussein from Xilinx. In previous eLabs, we went through the power requirements for Xilinx new Vertex 6 and Spartan 6 FPGAs, and also uh, the power estimator tools that Xilinx has available. So in today's eLab, we're going to give you a little bit more detail about how you actually design and configure your power supply using TI's Fusion Power GUI. Today, I'm going to provide a demonstration of our Fusion Digital Power Designer, which is the development tool that uh, customers use when configuring our controllers. In this specific case, I'm demonstrating the 9224. So uh, this device can regulate it up to two individual outputs, um, two individual DC to DC converters, and be configured for up to four phase um, of output power. So it could be two outputs, each two phase if you chose to, uh, a single three phase output with a, a, with a single phase output as well, or um, two single phase. Uh, it's all depending on, on how you want to configure the part. In this case, I'm showing two individual um, single phase outputs as would be used for the Xilinx uh, Vertex 6 and Spartan 6 FPGAs. This rail is regulating to two and a half volts. Um, as you can see, looking through here, you have over voltage warning and fault levels that are configurable, margin levels if you chose to, to do margining in your system, uh, margin low as well, and then uh, under voltage uh, warning and fault levels. Right here is showing power good, so uh, you can configure power good with hysteresis, so uh, it'll output a power good signal or uh, determine when that rail is in power good. Here's on-off configuration for configuring the device and how you'd like it to respond upon configuration when it's in a system. Turn-on timing, including delay, rise time, uh, maximum turn-on time, and, and fault response in that scenario, as well as turn-off timing. Down below here, you see voltage tracking. So you can not track at all, obviously. You can track based on internal rails, or you can track based on internal pins if you chose to. And it even has a tracking scale factor for things like... Uh, uh, DDR memory. If you wanted to track one rail at uh, say 50% of another rail, you can do that. Turn on dependencies are included in the device, so you can make, right now we're looking at rail one, as you can see by looking at the cursor on the top right hand side, you can make one rail one uh, turn on dependent upon rail two being within regulation. And then staying on dependencies, so in this case if, um, if, if you clicked rail two and rail two went down, then that would pull rail one down with it. And then it has shutdown modes that are shown on the right-hand side. Over here, you're showing the rails that you're showing the details for. So that I'm showing rail 1 right now. If I click right here, it'll then pull out the information relative to rail 2. You also have the ability to rename rails if you chose to. So I just renamed that rail B. So that, that'll then uh, show up in the, in the graphical design as well. Makes it easier for you to track your design. There are many other configuration options uh, for more advanced configurations, things like phase and rail configuration. If you wanted to make this a multi-phase device, you can do so. Um, you can configure GPIO in the device, uh, etc. But that shows the basic configuration. Now I'll move on to the design screen. So the design screen, we're really trying to strive to, to make the product very easy to use. So let me, uh, let me show, for instance, I'll switch over to a different rail, which in this case is rail 2. And you can see here, you can select the power stage. So are you using a module? And here we list some of the modules that, um, that you can use with the digital controller. Or you can select discrete components. So if you want to select discrete drivers, you can do so there as well. Basic information about the design is included here. And then you can click here, and you put information about your schematic. So note, we will automatically configure and select many of the components in the system just by clicking those boxes. And here is where you add components. If you want to add capacitors, all you do is you click on the boxes, and it will then go ahead and add the component that you select. Plus, you have the ability to put your own components in. If you wanted to add new components to the library, you can do that as well. So that's all, that's all part of the tool. If you go down further, it has uh, information related to um, device uh, design to device synchronization. So if you wanted to do things like um, configure and calibrate your current limits, and you have the ability to do that, as well as everything else that's listed there. For multi-phase, you have the ability to phase shed. 
So when you're uh, looking for more efficiency for a multi-phase system, here you phase shed based on current levels that you select. You shed down to a certain number of phases, so then it'll turn off the other stage until the current's over a certain level. And here is, again, the hysteresis for the current measurement that'll turn on and off phases. One interesting feature of the digital controller, we can automatically tune the compensation. So by selecting auto-tune here, you can then select put information about your target phase margin, V in, v out, uh, v in max and V in nominal percentage, so for deviation, and then select auto-tune, and it'll pick the compensation for you. Uh, going, going back down the list, this has information about uh, compensation. In auto-tune mode, this will not show up because you're asking the, the, the computer to actually select your compensation. But in manual tune mode, you have the ability to select your pull and zero placement. As you can see here, we're showing a couple different graphs. One is the Bode plot for the power stage. And the other, this is time simulation. So this is the, with, with the compensation that's in here on this specific rail, that'll, this will show how, how far during a transient, and in this case a transient goes from 25% to 75% of the rated current, which is 10 amps, at 1 amps per microsecond. This will show uh, the deviation expected on the output. And it's a simulation, but it's proven to be relatively accurate. So moving right along, I will show some information on monitoring. So in this case, we're, we're monitoring the output, um, and at this point in time, the output is actually turned off. So I will go ahead and turn the device on to always converting. And there you can see the device is, is going up to about 1.8 volts, and showing the input current is obviously uh, very light in this example. And it's monitoring temperature and output current, input current, input voltage, things like that. So this is really just more of, a, of an indicator of, of what is happening up there with your power supply when you're in regulation. Note you do have the ability to configure your, um, your over-voltage and under-voltage information as well as over-current and under-current information while in these specific screens. So status will tell you information about the power stage itself. Is there, are there any faults that weren't cleared previously? This will store this information into the device. Here is logged faults. And then it'll also show information on peak, peak recordings for you, so you can read that information back at a future point in time via PM bus. And then security. So we have the ability to have certain commands that cannot be overwritten once you're out um, in, in manufacturing and your application is out in the field if you wanted to protect um, what information could potentially be overwritten there. So that's what that specific command does. So as you could tell, there's a lot of flexibility built into these digital power controllers to really help simplify design and really adapt themselves for changes in design. So that's, uh, that's one of the big values of digital power, and it's one of the reasons in specifically things like monitoring current that has made this a very nice match for uh, the Xilinx Spartan 6 and Vertex 6 FPGAs. So again, I'm Steve Bacota. Thank you very much for spending the time going through the tool, and, and uh, please contact one of our field applications people so we could do a more in-depth uh, demonstration and, and drop off a demo board so you can play with it as well. Thank you for your time.